good morning. This is Philip Steiger at TheBest3D.com and uh, right now here I want to show you uh, another new feature that's coming in PD Pro 7, Howler, really soon. It's also going to be in um, PD Pro 7 Artist. Anyway, the PD Pro 7, um, there is of course a particles button here that you've probably seen also in the menus here. Still the shortcut I for, I guess, incredibly addictive. Um, let's see, this is actually not the latest of the beta, I'm going to update soon, I just wanted to show you the evolution a little bit here, we've seen this before, bristles, and then now here we have orbitals, these are orbital particles. Now this is a big void and I'm going to leave it with that, I'm just going to do a little bit of a bristle this re uh, reduction here and you see something here. Okay, so kind of crazy stuff, uh, fun, addictive, um, you can also enable mirroring here. That's uh, unrelated, I mean that's something that we've had for a little while now, but you can do some really good magic with that. So, uh, let's move on, I'm going to uninstall this version and install the latest build, RC2, we're getting close to the release. This is, uh, what's today, this uh, 8th of December already, my my my, I need to pay my property taxes in a few days. Alright, I'll be back soon here with the next installation. Alright, so here we go, um, this is a quick walkthrough of the installation process. We are going to install a new version, this is still not the final release. This is release candidate 2, um, built on December 7th. It is today in the early morning of December 8th. And let's get going. So here we go. Starting that, UAC is going to ask, do you really want to do this? Um, let's go and say yes, of course. Next. Click next. Uh, installation folder, if you are on a 64-bit version of Windows, like in this case I'm on Windows 7, you will want to install it into the x86 tree. It's still a 32-bit application. Uh, make sure it goes there and um, default name is good even if you already had the PD Howler there um, you can just override on top of what's there and um, now of course if you prefer to keep the old version if you have version 6 you might want to install in a new folder all right so here we go and create a desktop icon okay and keep going very simple quick straightforward installation there is something new here and that is um, with regard to setting permissions at the very end of the installation. I will see that uh, very shortly. Um, if you are experiencing a trouble running the program or even installing, there may be some clues on what you might want to do. Um, we have the FAQ at thebest3d.com slash dogwaffle slash FAQ. Frequently asked questions. Not too frequently, luckily, but uh, you can find some help there if you have any sort of uh, problems installing it, problems registering an OCX or some other components, uh, problems running it after installation, uh, problems um, using certain features that might need access to a temp folder that maybe we don't have uh, right permission to, all that sort of things. Uh, one of the easiest way to fix that is to force it into compatibility mode into Windows XP Service Pack 2. So when you go into the properties of the program, you can simply <coughs> right click that uh, icon and select properties and find the tab that's named compatibility. And in there you'll find a couple of options. One of them might be to let it run as administrator. But that would be the last resort. Most of the time you don't need that. You certainly don't want to disable UAC. It's a good protection. Keep it. Um, but what you may want to do is run it in compatibility mode with Service Pack 2 on XP. Alright, so here's that last new option is add the registry key. That might help it run a little bit smoother. But on some systems that still doesn't do it. I've noticed here for instance it doesn't. But that's okay because the moment we've installed it, we can go and run it right here. And so at that point, uh, we're good. And so now I'm going to show you the new version of the latest build, the RCE Release Candidate 2, and the evolution of the Optipustix particle brushes, as you can see right here. So let me see if I can make this a little bit more convenient to see everything. There you go. Resize it to our scrap screen capture size. And there we go. So we have the particle brushes. These we've seen many times over, right? Attached to the brush. And of course, with that, you do all sorts of um, grass and foliage effects. Then we got the bristle brushes, which when you enable, it will disable the particles and switch over to the bristle mode. And with those, you can go and bristle over the existing image. 
and you got all sorts of modes and presets for more watery, less watery, less transparent, bleeding in a little bit more. It's a great way to start turning a photograph into a painterly appearance. You can change the angle of these bristles and so on. And of course it also is very recognizing of what your tablet can do with regard to angle pressure and so on. Uh, now here is the new stuff, the orbitals. Welcome to orbital particles. You enable that. I'm going to clean it and I'm going to start with the default. Now here's an interesting one. First of all, you click one of those, you'll see some animation down here. This is kind of giving you an idea of what the the, the cloud pattern is. This is uh, painting in the cloud. Well, in a, in a different way though. This is not the cloud in sense of the internet. This is a little cloud of particles that's contained inside a cube. And it's a 3D pipeline attached to the brush. So we actually uh, have 3D particles uh, inside the brush system here and what we're doing with that is letting you change the brush size make it a little bit bigger and see some evolution here's the torus here's a couple of others two toruses that are kind of opposing each other the yin and the yang um, and then here we got a few more and this one here as well so now when you have these let's say for instance the sphere you paint with that all right then it's kind of messy but you paint with that over again and again and it's still messy no surprise there but uh, let's see what we would use that for for instance uh, let's get the bristle count down to a really low number let's say uh, 25 right and the radius will keep it as it is mix the color color bleed let's do without so we now have the lines just as they are all right and let's say we start with something different let's say we render um, I don't know plasma noise that always works for space cadets uh, HSV nice beautifully colorful let's get a little bit of a um, grayscale conversion on that by exposing it through a lens and there you go all right so now uh, let's store this image we might go back to that and there you go so now we put a couple of these across now one thing you notice is that you can make the, um, the size delta scale here right check this and so now the size will not be fixed you can have the brush size reduced or bigger and you see the animation change here accordingly but it's also going to change it's going to scale based on how fast you move so if you go slowly you see it very tight together and if you go bigger you see it kind of expand and then come back together so that that creates some really interesting uh, shapes and capabilities here even just something like this look at that I'm going to undo that a little bit to make it not totally black remember that and now I'm going to use the uh, stylized lighting tool to apply some lighting to that and you have a whole gamut of new marble textures or, or scratched surfaces great way to explore that let's see something else that's really useless uh, <laughs> uh, I mean I, I can see I'm gonna be using a lot of time here looking at black and white pictures um, let's see uh, see these presets will set a couple of parameters and then of course you have many more variants that you can explore here and variations the density of the brush there you go so like so uh, you know for instance one thing I find really interesting is you can make it look a little bit like these uh, planets or moons that uh, orbit around Jupiter and they're like cracked with uh, gravitational forces pulling around um, even if you take something like this and you apply the again that stylized filter to that well that one's actually too dense but still it's a start um, let's let's go a little bit less than that uh, let's give it even fewer lenses uh, what am I saying lenses uh, bristles uh, bristle density let's go even lower on that there you go so you have just a few of these right and in no time you create something like this and or perhaps a little bit of a an embossing to that as well where's that uh, convolution there you go color emboss that will nicely enhance it uh, and then perhaps again go with the stylized lighting at that point <clears throat> what shall I do next perhaps create a Let's see, where's that uh, transform for the sphere eyes? There you go. And so that's that's the idea. That's where you can start creating some planetary surfaces or other types of textures that look like they're riddled with scratches. And so, welcome to a new feature in PD Pro, and it's called Orbitals. 
It is the orbital particle. It's a 3D brush. It is a brush not to paint on 3D object. It is an actual 3D brush, meaning the brush system is pushing these particles through a 3D pipeline. They are orbiting not just in a 2D space, but in a full 3D environment. Now, we don't see that quite yet so much. This is a start. There will be a whole lot of new features and other capabilities coming out of that, I sense. I do not promise. I don't have a crystal ball, but I know what, I, what tools to use in order to paint one. And with that, I'll leave you, and I uh, hope you see you soon in another tutorial. Thanks for watching.